Welcome back to my channel, I'm Flo, and for today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create these cool gradient textures in both Illustrator and in Photoshop. You can do the exact same thing in either or, but of course, if you're trying to do something specific, you might want to do it in Photoshop if you're trying to make certain effects, or you can do it in Illustrator as well. If you're interested in this, make sure to stay tuned. Now to begin, you want to make sure you open up Adobe Illustrator. Once you have it opened up and ready to go, you can go ahead and create a square. So I have a gradient right over here. And basically all I did is I just made a rectangle. And then I went ahead and I went to the gradient panel right here. Or you can even type it in the windows gradient, either or works. And then I clicked on the freeform gradient. Now this is one of my favorite gradients. And you can go ahead and choose the colors that you want. You can click right there on the picker and change the colors as whatever you like. Um, you don't have to have this as a gradient. You can even have it as a solid background, but I just feel like the gradient and the textures together, it gives so much more depth. So I thought, you know, why not show you these effects along with the gradient as well, just because I feel like they just look a lot more richer. But of course, whatever I show you, um, with the textures, you can apply this on just solid backgrounds as well. It just looks a lot more flat. That's that's why I thought I'd show you it on gradients because I just think it's a lot more interesting. All right. So once you have that and you're good to go, so um, you can just go ahead and like, anyways, I just wanted to show you that as an example. We can go ahead and click on our, our box or gradient box and then go ahead into effects and click on pixelate. And once you get to pixelate, you can choose the first one, which is color halftone. And then now I'll show you how this works. Basically, okay, so let's say the radius is one. Okay, I think that's too small. Okay, so the, I guess the smallest radius uh, pixels can be four. So this is what the smallest looks like. Now this will make you think maybe like those kind of like 60s kind of comic book pop art type of vibes. Um, my laptop is slow sometimes and then you get this texture now I think this is because it's on the lowest setting it doesn't look very obvious but if we zoom in you can see that texture there now what you can also do is if you go back you can go ahead and go back to color halftone and that's a, the lower setting but if you go let's say we want to do like 15 or something you'll start to see like the texture pop a lot more. So the higher the number, the more, the bigger the texture or the more it pops. So then now, as you can see, it looks a little bit more, you know, I feel like more evident. And then we can go even more further. So let's put in 50 and then the texture becomes a lot more evident. Now, depending on the look you're going for, you can choose whatever makes sense for you. So now you can see it really pops. And I actually like this. This looks really cool. Um, so they have these same effects in Photoshop. They're basically the same. They might look slightly different, um, but I'll show you that in a second after I show you this. So that's the first one. Now the second. All right. So the next one is crystallize. And then if you go onto the slider for the cell size, you can go ahead and basically, whoops. The, the bigger the number, the more the cell size. And then it kind of creates this interesting effect. I feel like my computer is going a little haywire for whatever reason. Okay, there we go. Now you can see the effect kind of show through. I think the thing with Illustrator is I feel like the the textures look a little bit more subtle. I think that's something that I've noticed. So you'll see in Photoshop, when you do it in Photoshop, I f you don't have to go as crazy down on the slider to really see the effect. So that's something that I notice now. All right. So this is the effect you get. You kind of get this like stained glass kind of look, which looks pretty interesting to me. Um, yeah, so that's a cool effect. You can mix it in and put it into your digital art or posters. Now, the next one, the third one is mezzotint. Now, this is where we kind of get into a little bit more of like noise and you have a good selection as well. So, so there's fine dots. 
and then there's medium dots there's grainy dots which is cool coarse dots there's even short lines like there's a lot that you can kind of go through and you can even make it a little bit smaller so you can kind of see the full picture and see how it looks yeah it looks pretty cool so if you're looking for a very specific texture or you're trying to create something that's very even retro like a lot of these textures can be something that's pretty cool let's go for the medium dots and let's see how that looks so kind of have mesotint is very like i feel like similar to noise i feel like it basically is noise um, so there you have it you get this cool texture which i, I really like it looks pretty cool now if you feel like you want something more grainier you can go ahead and go back and click on something that is a little bit more coarse or grainy you know um so let's go for a grainier or even a coarse one of coarse dots so like we can really see the texture a lot more and yeah you have something that looks like that so that's pretty cool and yeah, I've been seeing this in um, some illustrations and artwork. Um, I really feel like the texture is coming back. And last but not least is pointillize. And it's very similar, actually. It looks similar to the noise, but actually you have a choice in the cell size and how big it is. So you can have it a lot smaller, which it looks almost similar to... Um, the noise but just a little thicker so let's go not too crazy big let's go for 20 because you can make it really huge if you want to but i feel like it starts to look not even like texture like it just looks like big clumps of blobs basically if you go super high i mean if that's what you're going for it almost looks like um like stippled marker or something like that so that's a very very cool effect you could use stippled marker also makes me think it also makes me think of uh what you would call it kind of like watercolors a little bit it's like watercolor markers or something like this is how it is in uh, basically an illustrator now let's say we want to do this in photoshop basically you can just drag and drop you can just save it as a jpeg or you can do what i do which is basically the dirty version or you know i don't know the cheating version whatever you want to call it and just drag and drop so which this works is just as fine but it's whatever you prefer um there we go so we have that here what you can do is just like basically just go ahead and i i guess stretch to you stretch it out a bit it's fine because it's a gradient um yeah there we go so it's essentially the same thing um you go into filter now now that we're in photoshop and then you go to pixelate and it's basically the same thing so it's like but you will notice that like the effects look a lot more like you know in your face i feel like this is what 20 looks like i remember if you go back in the illustrator version it wasn't as like huge the texture so yeah it's essentially the same thing so you just you can just go back and yeah you have the same effects right there there's color half tone crystallize there's facet and fragments but I, I won't get into that um but yeah you have the same ones color half tone crystallize mesotint and pointillize and they're all there and yeah you can go ahead and mix these styles as well i mean these textures as well so for example you can even mix let's say um oil paint so the nice thing about doing this in photoshop is that you have it as a smart object so you can turn it on and off but if you have it in illustrator you can't really do that which is the only thing so like for example we can mix textures together um so that's a cool thing that you can do and it's cool that in Photoshop, like I said, you have it as a smart object and you can easily turn things on and off. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know what you guys think of this. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll catch you at my next video. Bye bye for now.